What are you drinking? Blueberry tea. Because I'm wearing blue today. Don't you? You were doing no, some I kind don't, of pink I don't, tea? I don't coordinate my beverages to my wardrobe, unlike you. You were so stylish. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I'm Dave. Hi, you guys. I'm Lisa. And we are here. I hope you know who we are. Yeah, I don't well, know why we introduced yeah, We ourselves. introduced it. It's just a... It's a, it's it's a, a formality. Yeah. So we are coming to the end of our, our, our series, Undo, in which we talked about the seven deadly sins and the, I guess, the seven corresponding uh, virtues. Yeah. And so... Uh, we're going to be kind of transitioning out. So as we kind of close that, we just had some thoughts yeah. um, about that series um, because we've gotten a lot of feedback from you guys that it's been kind of a helpful, introspective mm-hmm. way to look at, at life. And so I, I just think it would be good as we close the series just to reflect with your groups about ask them, hey, what was out of all the seven vices, what's the one that hit you mm-hmm. most squarely in between the eyes? What headway are you making? And, and what do you what do you uh how are you making headway in that? So Yeah. And we kind of thought one of the other things we wanted to talk with you guys about today along that line is there were spiritual practices that were kind of helping us with those vices. And those spiritual practices aren't just for the seven weeks that we did this series. Right. They're like to be continued on. Correct. And there's so many more practices as well. So we'd love, um, as we head into this new series of the red letters of Jesus, we're going to be in certain passages in the Gospels of wonderful stories that we get to Mm -hmm. see how Jesus lived his life on earth and what that has to do with us and how it moves us. And so we want to um, talk about a particular practice called Lectio or Lectio Divina today. Um, That is a way that you can continue um, the spiritual practice of that with your life groups um, as we move into a new series as well. The uh, the Red Letter series, which is called Red Letters, the very words of Jesus, is going to take uh, seven passages of, of actual words from actual Jesus. Um, and and the, thing, the reason we've chosen these is because they're not difficult to understand. Like the plain meaning of the words of Jesus' text is not mm-hmm. difficult to decipher. It's just difficult to put into practice. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so um, in doing so, we don't think that there's going to be a lot of exegetical or hermeneutical work that's going to be really difficult for you to pull out. What in the world is Jesus saying? That's yeah. not what these passages are. They're, they're very plain in their meaning. It's just that they're hard to put into practice. Yeah. So this uh, Lectio Divina is a way for us to help. It's kind of, Make it personal. Yeah. Have it go down. You have an expression yeah. that, that, that let the scriptures read you or let yes. the Holy Spirit talk to you through this holy text. Yeah, so exactly. why don't you just kind of outline what Lectio yeah. Divina is for folks who maybe don't know. It's actually pretty simple. Yeah. And once you, you're like, well, that, how is that? How is that? What? Yeah. Anyway, so why don't you. So first? it means holy reading is what that term actually means. So it is kind of letting, as you said, scripture read us. And so typically in a, in, in a setting, and I, we've, I've done this personally before, I've done it in a group setting. And let's pretend that we're going to do it in a group setting. Let's pretend. Pretend. We're all together. We're all here. together. <laughs> Close your eyes as I read this passage. No, so you read a passage and you're going to read it three times. The first time you read it, you read it to to hear it and to understand it, but also kind of with a sensitivity, is there a certain word or a phrase that kind of pops out at me as I read it or as it's being read to me? The second time you read it, again, kind of not so much for the intellectual part of reading and picking it apart, the passage, but what might God be speaking to me in this passage? And usually by the second time you read it, something really starts to percolate and make its way to the top. And then the third time is kind of solidifying that, oh, yep, nope, that's what it is that I sense God may want me to stop with and to explore with him. So once you've figured out what that is, you're kind of going to a time really of meditating on, okay, God, I think it's this. What do you want me to to understand or know about it? And then there's this kind of response time where it's like, give me an open heart to this word or to this phrase that keeps coming up. Mm-hmm. And, and then this kind of last part of just listening to God in it. Um, what is it exactly that, that I need to learn and understand about you and about me in this passage? How do you want me to move out of my time in this passage Mm -hmm. with you? What might be different? How might I see things different? How might I see myself differently, you differently, because of my time personally 
with the words in that passage. Yeah. Does that make sense? When, yeah. When we do this with high schoolers, often I'll give them the passage. We'll actually read it. Mm -hmm. We have somebody read it out loud three times. And the first time we'll give them a highlight or a pen. They'll highlight. That really helps them stay on track. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do that or not. Or you can just, you know, just listen to so it. So do you print times. the passage out? I, I print the passage I like or I have idea. them have their Bibles. And okay. that's, that's and they can underline it. <laughs> um, that helps high schoolers stay on track. Yeah. But the, you read it three times. And again, we've chosen passages that are not difficult to understand. You're not going to have to do a lot of, here's what was going on in the Assyrian Empire. This is not Leviticus mm -hmm. or um, the middle of Isaiah. This is this, These are pretty simple, straightforward yeah. passages. You read it a couple times, and, and then at the end, I love this, then people share. Yeah. What, what, what came? Oh, yeah, that's the, true. At the end, we just kind of share. Yeah. And it's, it's a really powerful time. Yeah. It really is. And, you know, we know this as leaders, too. Don't point at people and tell them, you need to share. Like, it's just really neat when you open it up. Yeah. Um, especially maybe people that tend to not share on a regular basis because they've had time to actually be with God and think. And in a quiet space, they're actually more apt mm -hmm. to speak out in a yeah. situation like this. So it's a beautiful um, opportunity for people to talk about hmm, what God showed me and to see that in a short period of time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, yeah. God can speak to you in profound ways. Yeah. And that's what we really want people to understand. That's how life transformation happens. Again, it's yeah. not all about what is up here. It's transferring it down. Here. Two other things that we just want to say why we think that this is effective and why mm -hmm. I, I've kind of seen it with high school uh, and be effective and also with adults is number one, our busyness of our pace of our schedules mm -hmm. in the Bay Area. A lot of people don't even slow down for even five minutes. So true. And so just to have time to mm -hmm. slow for five minutes is like, <sighs> it's yeah. a big deal. Mm -hmm. And second, a lot of times in the Bay Area, people are not intentionally interact interacting with scripture. Yeah. And so this is just, I mean, we believe in scripture. We believe that scripture is God breathed. That it is it actually is from mm -hmm. God and is for our benefit. So this is a really neat way to do this. So this is an option you can use. And I would say leaders, for many of you, you are in the word on a yeah. regular basis. So this is familiar to you yeah. as far as realizing that God's word speaks to you. For some people in your group, they've never experienced that before. And they're afraid of the word because yeah. they feel like they won't understand it. What do you mean God speaks to you through yeah. the word? It's like, so this is a sacred time. And um, to be yeah. able to set aside um, and do with your group and hopefully not just one time, but maybe multiple times through this series. Yeah. Yeah. So as we go into the Red Letter series, we're just going to um, we're going to have lots of time where we're going to be spending seven weeks looking at the words of Jesus. We just hope that this is a helpful practice yeah. and maybe helps your group really kind of discuss these passages yeah. a little bit more deeply and personally. And for you as leaders who want to know what the passages are down below, you'll see the new series is up yep. and lets you know what weeks we'll be talking on what subjects. And of course, that's always up for change, but I think it's pretty solidified. It's pretty pretty one. solidified. Yeah. I don't think we're yeah. going to change it much. Yeah. All right. All right, you guys. Hope this is helpful. Hopefully yeah. it gives you some great ideas of things you can do with your group and individually. And we look forward to seeing you in yeah. a couple weeks. We'll see you soon. All right. Have a great week. Bye.